Everything is in the address on Chrome by the Honorable Daberna J. Nunich, MP, to Mr. Nash City. My fellow members, the preamble to our constitution states that we, people of this family of islands, recognize that the preservation of freedom will be guaranteed by a national commitment to self discipline history, loyalty, unity, and an abiding respect for Christian values and rule of law. It is on this solid foundation that the Bahamas has long held proudly the tradition of peace and stability, and stands as an example of the world, a true of promise, a small country that is big on pride and evil. Our country is an archipelago, like a bridge between the northern Caribbean island in the south and southern United States in the north. A section of beauty and surpassed. It is that strategic location that has always subjected the Bahamas to cruelty from the days of the pirates when the mob of then colonies expulsed press which means when pirate was spelled, trade was restored. Although we progress in many ways since these days, strategic corruption has over the years precipitated an healthy level of lessness, where incidents of serious crimes and villains have reached unacceptable levels. Behemoth today, absurd, of crimes against persons, which include robbery, shootings, sexual assault, domestic violence, and in single murder. Such violent crime, including murder, directly connect to the transhuman of and trade, illegal drugs, and illegal firearms ammunition through islands. Additionally, there are trafficking persons, women smugglers, and money launderers, which form the basis of transnational enterprises which confront us on a daily basis. These crime against persons are experienced predominantly the islands of Newfoundland and Grand Bahama, where most of our population resides. The security of Bahama and its citizens are top priority to the government of the Bahamas. We are very concerned and will do all that we can to combat crime, in particular murders. Additionally, we will continue to aggressively pursue criminal enterprises involved in human trafficking, human smuggling, and money under. I want to assure all Bahamas that the government understands and shares the same level of concern that you currently experience on the total level of crime in our nation. We know that you want and deserve to feel safe and that you want crime to be reduced. But we must each make a full commitment to all within our power to address the situation if we have to move to a safe, modern, prosperous, prosperous perhaps a stronger Bahamas. In order to successfully combat the development of today, we keep much with what is happening on our streets, in our communities, and even in our homes. We must devise workable response based on an assumption of emerging crime trends. Although overall crime has been trending good since 2012, murders are the yards by which the public gazes to the level of crimination. As time last year, there were 77 murders. Thus so far, this year, there has been a total of 97 murders, present an increase of nearly 25%. Also, the of murders over the last years uncovered some problems. First, more than 60%, that is, 6 out of 10 of the incidents occur in our inner city communities. We look at victims and specs, we met similarities there also. About 50% of murder victims prior to criminal records, several percent of whom were previously charged with murder. As for the suspects, nearly 8% of them prior criminal records, 15% of which were previously due to murder. The region drug trade is responsible for much of the ones, making it of the root cause of crime in Antr The drug traffickers have transformed into criminal enterprises that steal drugs from each other and compete for the drug in store Within the Ministry of National Security, the National Anti-Drug Secretariat, which is the coordinating board for all anti-drug agencies, has really been entered. NUDS has briefed conduct a civil research activities that will be used to inform the best progressive strategies and programs in the fighting sense. Local law enforcement agents in cooperation with their international drug parts continue to produce tangible results in their efforts by seizing cocaine, marijuana, and other incidents. Most recently, have been two major drug busts in Mulai, which was adapted, a 35 foot fast vessel, orders off Camp Sandras, seized 5,050 pounds of marijuana with an estimate value of $4.6 million. Five Hamians and one Jacob were arrested. Weeks later, over three bales of marijuana and 100 cocaine were seized in a local home. Four suspects were taken custody. The ones in that case paid 1,186 pounds, to have a value of nearly $1.2 million. The United States, Bahamian, and Tinkegos Island Forest have for the last several decades cooperated in its drug interdiction program called OPBAT, which recognized as the most effective initiative of its kind globally. Last year, 
Bahamas Police Force and the Bahamas Defense Force received a nod from the United States in recognition of the significant contributions they made to the OBAT program. The upcoming Africa, increasing international threat posed to the trucking of narcotics and other such substances. Process stakeholders have all been assisted in the drug fight. For example, the Araki Kina Port Company has agreed to fund a new Kena interdiction unit. This involves purchasing dozens which are trained to drugs and forests and stationing them at the port to examine the coming containers for contraband. This program is operated by the Bahamas Police Force and will supplement the work of the Customs Department with its own kind of interdiction unit. Through the anti drug criteria, we also refocus the way we fight the drug trade from a strictly enforced approach to an approach that also tells the local demand for drugs. It comes to our attention that some drugs, tobacco, distress, and are focusing their attention on marking their products to young people. Some of the most popular proximity to youth are known as aquid or beads and a recent one called a hoop pen. This hoop pen product comes many colors and many flavors that appeal to young people and are being marketed as a healthier alternative to cigarettes. The fact is, however, these drugs can be more lethal than regular cigarettes. Additionally, evidence has suggested persons who use these drugs are more likely to use illegal drugs. There are also some cases where persons have placed marijuana inside these products. And for there is a local company who is producing a brand of the equipment. So we're moving to enact and force strict regulations to ensure that these products are safe, fully marketed, and not offered safe for minors. We will also launch a public awareness campaign to better educate members of the public, particularly youth and their parents, on the harmful effects of using backwood, D, pukans, and similar products. Overall, we will more focus and attention on activities that are aimed at dissuading youth to become interested in using drugs by lowering the demand. I wish to be your attention that it is our knowledge that there are many young persons who have a prison record of conviction for minor crimes of the use and or abuse of drugs. Indeed, the majority of youth in our prisons test positive for drugs, especially marijuana. It is intended to take a approach to this case, offering to them exposure to what is known as drug treatment courts. These courts, rather than seeing such persons in prison, will provide the opportunity for rehabilitation, or chemesis, and skills training. If successful, the offender would be reintegrated into the community with a label associated with a criminal god. Fellow humans, the drug trade drives crime through violence associated with trafficking guns and contributes to the widespread availability of illicit firearms. When the levels of crime violence increase, but the use of weapons and criminals has increased as well. The combination of illegal drugs and illegal firearms is a prime formula for murder. Illegal firearms are being used in the vast majority of murders committed in the Bahamas. Between the years 2005 and 2014, the police seized a total of 3,328 firearms. For this year alone, the police have already confiscated 206 tons of 4,273 rounds of ammunition. It appears that while morons are taken off the street, girls are finding it difficult to get firearms and to commit more violent crimes. More recently, there has been a shift from hands to the increasing use of high powered automatic guns such as the K57 assault rifle. Our strategy is also designed to reduce and control the number of firearms in the country, which will have a direct effect on the high murder rate. Given the architecture of our nation, gun addiction at our borders has proven to be a challenging, accommodated task. Nonetheless, we are up to charge. The government has organized our local firearm intelligence agents, which are collaborating with the international counterparts, including the United States Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, known as AF. We have been producing and providing us with more and more useful information to persons who are bringing these guns into country. Two recent cases of district fruitfulness has improved partnership. First, in early June, this year, LZ to the search of illegal farms along 500 sounds of ammunition, which recovered through a cool service. Three men were arrested in Kitchener this year. Additional arrests are expected both in the Bahamas and in the United States. A few days later, officials were able to accept gun traffickers who were attempting to smuggle firearms through the Arawaki China port. After a shot face, officers caught two males and conducted a search of the two boxes they had in their possession and found therein eight legal hands. The two suspects, stages 35 and 21, were taken to custody. 
our local farm facing an investigation unit had upgraded with full complement of highly trained, experienced investigators. The year has been fitted with the latest technology advancements, tracing and identification software, including the Bummer's Degrist Integrated Ballistic Information Network, BIBIN, keeps them on cutting edge in disrupting the illegal gun trade. New tracing technology enabled the fish to trigger gun, which had been pushed outside the Bahamas, linking to the commission of crime inside the Bahamas with A's. In order to prevent confiscated weapons from getting to the hands of members of the public, United Nations Journal for Peace, Sound and Development in Latin America and the Caribbean gifted the Bahamas government with a machine which destroyed weapons. That weapon struck machine has been to good use for the last three years. Addressing loopholes to which firearms and ammunition in access in the Bahamas and an ongoing effort of the Ministry of National Security. For example, travel, travelers from the United States to the Bahamas can be able to bring an export of it to airlines for the transportation of firearms in the We have under consideration the prohibition of the importation of firearms and ammunition at commercial airlines with the imposition of significant funds on airlines that accept firearms and ammunition for transport into the Bahamas without a met previous issue by the robust police force. As of late, a number of persons have used social media to post pictures of themselves posing with illegal weapons and or to threatening situations to the general public and to lease. Now, I'm not going to allow those to use social media to spin the minds of the public. This sort of behavior cannot and will not be tolerated. As a result, the police have arrested charged some of these persons for their actions. The police case involved a female who was seen in single magazine into what appears to be an AK for self or sorry for. In addition to processing sections and per stop to them, we have also drafted a cybercrime bill to specifically address crimes committed by citizens to use computers and some media. It is our intention to present this bill part in the future. For the Haymans, another trend of observed the proliferation of criminal gangs, which began to form in local communities. A. Young men who call themselves gang leaders, recruiting younger men, many of whom were high school dropouts. In fact, they have no, in fact, many of our high schools, which in many schools are adopted into these gangs. The gangs include One Order, Fire and Stuff, Maras, Mafa, Ward, Dirty South, Zone, all the films, you see, and some others. They are them more organized and are deeply involved in illegal drug and gun trades. The drugs they sell and the guns they use to protect their life result much of the murder and mem and violence that we currently experience, especially in Providence. In fact, about 60% of the murders are resolved retaliation between rival gang members. These young men and women live in homes. They are relatively muscle about criminal activities, and in case depend the proceeds of the ill-gotten goods. In many cases, young men end up in prison or lose their lives. How more of them do we intend to lose? Officials throughout the national security agencies have specially set and trained both locally and overseas to dismantle the gangs which are a mess to society. Indeed, I regard them as public enemy no one. They have established an anti-gang unit which is currently attached to the firearm training and investigation unit and they have begun their arresting gang members for their engagement in illicit activities. Last year, Parliament enacted an amendment to the penal code with the intent to eradicate gangs from arms. Behaved, especially young men, should be aware that membership in an illegal gang is now a major criminal offense. Punishable conviction to a fine of five hundred thousand dollars, that's half a million dollars, and to imprisonment for two years. The act also set a crime for any person has in their possession a group vest in association an unlawful gang is liable on conviction to a fine of one hundred thousand dollars and imprisonment for ten years. And men also make an offense for members of an unlawful gang to commit crime involving guns and or drugs, the penalty for which on conviction is five hundred thousand dollars and twenty years in prison. So therefore warning gang members that as this law takes effect, the consequences for you are very, very serious. Several leaders are present at the time Bahamas Department of Corrections, though not being convicted under this particular law. But we want you to do our part to ensure that all gang members who continue to disrupt peace and tranquility of our nation will face the full run of this new amendment. Fellow Bahamians, I now introduce to your attention issues related 
to the grand bill to occupants. I have discovered that about 30 persons who charged murder were also on bail for a Nazi offense. In fact, thus far for this year, 15 of the murder victims were on bail for a serious offense. In other words, research has shown that persons who are charged with violent crimes, including murder, are more likely to become a murder victim than those who are not charged with a violent crime. The truth is that if these persons are charged with serious crimes were not on bail, this murder would have occurred, and the murder rate would be in the to confirm observations that last year of the mur 30 of the murder victims persons were bail for committing this offense. Had they been denied bail, there would have been less than 100 more cases last year. This issue of bail is therefore quite safe. I understand the right to bail as guaranteed by our constitution. I must confess that if it was in my part, I would not release any person charged with murder on bail. Constitutionally, however, that power is all vested in the judiciary. Our research also revealed that some persons are on the victims of fatal retaliation. We have knowledge of a case of suspect who was on hand, the part of correctional system, was about to be released to someone who stood his bail. For he was and asked who the identity of the person who was standing bail for him. I didn't know who it was. When the name was revealed to him, it was a person who did not know. And so he immediately asked that he be released, and he was concerned that the person may well be incurring his release in order to harm him. With 10 Supreme Courts now sitting to hear criminal cases, our colleagues, those of the Attorney General, are cutting down the backlog, making progress in getting murder trial within a short possible time. Remember for that, and we support them. Given the very serious challenges we face with respect to illicit drugs, firearms, and criminal gangs, I appreciate the call by someone, by some people, who are the established of social courts to adjudicate this case. That is, the cases of punishment for offenses associated with these matters, with drugs, with guns, and with things. Like the issue, however, the final determination of the approach taken is a matter for the judiciary. We do want aim is to lose confidence in our criminal justice system and attempt to administer street justice. However, we will therefore continue to do whatever it takes to ensure that all the judges have their day court. Perhaps one of the most controversial debates remains definitely the why there are no hangers. There's a great deal of information. There are persons incarcerated at the Department of Criminal Services waiting the death sentence. That is the case. At present, there is only one person on death row. His sentence is under active appeal, which means as long as it's under appeal, he cannot hang. A constitution permits use of death penalty in cases where a, a person is convicted of murder and is sentenced to death acts. There has been debate on the administration of the death penalty. The Judicial Committee of the Council, our highest of appellate jurisdiction, has determined that the death penalty is reserved only for what we call the worst of the worst cases. As a result, a significant number of persons sent to death had their sentence committed to life or other terms of imprisonment. The issue of what the death penalty, therefore, a main challenge for us. For instance, a recent case an accused found guilty of murder, the judge described the murder as a premeditated and this act is accused of shot the victim some 16 times. You and I may be the view that a misdescribed would be suffered as being among the worst the worst. However, individuals in other cases are sentenced to imprisonment rather than death penalty. My fellow humans, police officers are skillfully trained the proper use of the firearms that they carry on a daily basis. Recently, then several police incident encounters have resulted in spots being fatal wounded. Of occurrences to love of these persons fortunately lost their lives. While the coroner investigates the incidents and to find members of the public, the officers are authorized to use their weapons when their lives or the lives of others are in imminent danger. I want to let the enforcement officers know we are full to them, putting their lives on the land each day. So that a beacon of doing our directors in peace. I also issue a warning, pointing a gun in the direction of police officers who are doing their job is not a good idea. I take this opportunity to plead to our young men to become your brother's keep. Resolve conflict through peaceful resolutions. I appeal to each of you and your families help us to stop the bloodshed. I also appeal to all members of the general public that if you have any information of crime that has occurred. All of them who is prepared to engage in the criminal act, call the police. Repeat it. The instances through your serious incidents 
have been voided. And that's the way it should be. Fellow Bahamians, to maximize the use of national law enforcement resource against increasing criminal activities, a military re the head of national law enforcement agency called NIA, to oversee the coordination and synchronization of efforts of the various law enforcement agencies in our new resolved feed time. Holy Augustus of the Commission of the Command of Defense Force, the Control of Customs, the Director of Green, the Minister of Corrections, and the Director of the National Intelligence Agency, who made real to plan and discuss strategies for securing the peace and safety of our citizens and of our country. We are involving the Royal Defense Force in time for addition to other law and duties. The government has approved a $202 million loan for the action of the State of Art, the and the modernization of our bases and port facilities at Coral Harbor and in the Central and Southern Bahamas, Gunpoint, Ragallan, and Mafia Town, Niagara, respectively. The Defense Force is five of the number of craft. These craft already produce some results. For example, while the Patrol Defense Force has covered over 100 pounds of marijuana on our islands and have apprehended some 15 persons for possession of indicated firearms and ammunition. Results suggestions member the public, one of the crime for we set up an output at speed tools. Results there and project too. South Beach is no longer a major drop point for ill immigrants. Defense Force has also stated this by establishing post patrols in New Orleans. Assist the police by monitoring of land and sea areas. The Sandy Bottom Project calls for a number of two thunder officers, non missioned, and also means by 2019. To date, the Defense Force has a combat of 1,345 personnel. And so we have embarked upon an extensive recruitment program at a rate of probably 185 persons per year over the next and a half year in order for us to be able to operate our bases and our ships and aircraft. Every year, the largest number of Marine recruits in the history of Defense Force 108 in total graduated from military training. We will continue to expand the reach of Defense Force and provide Marines with the tools they need to carry their duties effectively. Ultimately, Defense Force is prepared to provide even greater assistance to the police force as it becomes necessary. The Department of Comforts have been buttressed by addition of a main unit, establishment K9 interdiction unit. Ideally, equipment has been cured to skin cleaners. All of these jobs have been instituted, instituted as part of our strategy to accept this law of drugs, weapons, and ammunition, and smuggling of goods to aid the payment of immigrant duties. The government also invested billions of dollars in purchasing of civil that police vehicles to ensure police are able to effectively control our communities. Using the geographical information system, crime mapping, examining crime trends, a saturation patrol strategy. implemented to ensure that the police make their presence felt throughout our communities, particularly those that are suspected crime. Having proper police officers constantly patrol throughout the crime hotbox has only improved response times, but has already reduced the fear of crime and it would be offense. In fact, patrol officers have caught many spare red handed and prevented many serious crimes from occurring. Enforcement agencies are making use of the technological advance in them fighting, including the use of closed circuit television and electronic monitoring. Currently, uh, over 360 persons have been released on bail while also being electronically monitored. It costs $15 per day to monitor each person. We annually mix up over $2 million. These advances have yielded significant results as they have been used as investigators in the identification of suspects and these such suspects the scene crime. This technology has all been used simply as evidence in a number of crime trials, including murder trials. At the same time, almost 150 high resolution cameras have been strategically positioned without new evidence. Assist law enforcement officials in crime. The use of CT has been successful as portrayed have been caught on camera, committing or intending to commit criminal offenses. This has proven to be very helpful to investigators as they are able to identify specs and use footage as evidence being trials. CCV and herself has been shown to have preventative effect by virtue of being aware that they are being watched. We call to criminal justice. Fellow Bahamas and rents of the Bahamas, addressing the crime problem requires a holistic, multi pronged approach. As we go first and against and repeat offense, we are building safer Bahamas, targeting effective prevention of crime, early intervention, and education. We understand the importance of clearing the underlying issues associated with crime in order to make our nation safe. Funding from the American Development Bank. We are about to invest some $20 million in a new citizen security and justice program. 
The findings of a recent inclusions and crime and survey are being used to design several crime event programs for the subject. It is among the most comprehensive and innovative crime reduction strategies that have been devised to address the root cause of crime from a socioeconomic crime prevention perspective. This multifaceted approach will not only include prevention, intervention, and pressure tactics, but will also address charges involving prosecution, attending, and the obtain of persons in conflict with the law. There are four key objectives, which include first, improving violent behavior, which invokes the provision norms do not promote violence to solve conflicts. Second, increasing employability and employment of risks between the ages of 15 and 25 years. As our well, employment is likely at high crime rates. Thirdly, sentencing institutional, strengthen institutional capabilities of the justices to turn swift to case bill. And finally, reduce the recidivism rate, which involves rehabilitation and interdiction of offense, so that upon release from print, they are equipped to the crime free lapse. Numerous governmental and governmental agencies, civic organizations in our country, already programs that address the social combat being faced by people. Rather than reinventing the wheel, we're going to provide funding other means of support to ongoing local programs that have demonstrated effectiveness and success. We want to assist them in expanding their reach, building their capacity in offering programs. For example, persons like Estee Lee, who resides in the Fort Kill area, has opened the to volunteer her time and office to assisting students who need after school instruction and assistance with their work. She was featured in the ZS program on people. These are type programs and people we will be supporting in the new student study and justice plan. We welcome more their civic organizations and civil society who want to partner with us in the time fight. Additionally, we try other programs which have worked elsewhere, especially if they are working in our region. Unreal 2.0 remains a vibrant, potent, comprehensive crime and program, touch our inner city community primarily. Unreal 2.0 transformed the lives of many Haman families through its area outreach programs. I can the fallen killer office from the police and the forces who oneself unselfishly beyond working hours to positively hug the lives of me in the communities. This is in fact the most significant solution in its history. And it is a manifestation of our commitment to heal the sick, house the homes, protect the vulnerable, and bring peace to every house. The school based PC program which began in two thousand and five continued to curtail acts of violence. Nassles. A scholarly study was completed on the program, and it was found that there was statistically significant lower rates of violence in schools when police officers were in schools, and significant high rates when they were moved from the campuses. There were some apprehension of the program during its school phase. The program now enjoyed full support of all stakeholders. This program will be further expanded to show that it was not only safe while in school grounds, but also while travel to and from school. We will continue to spend enough effort to protect our children, especially when they are doing their studies. Youth are disproportionately represented in the ranks of the victims and perpetrators of crime and violence. At present, there are 34 boys of the age of 18 who are incarcerated in the Department of Correctional Services, and some of them are incarcerated for murder. None of these boys finished school. Our investigation shared more on the challenges that our city youth face the young boys and girls are not needing basic education. Google surveys found that in some cases, only six percent of males actually make it beyond the ninth grade. Regrettably, the remainder of them are either expelled from school, suspended for pits, or simply dropped out of school. Suddenly, two of our school girls still be pregnant and do complete their high school education. Such persons be relevant, positive education or skills are not to unemployment, possibly to crime. In recognition from the government allocated some twenty dollars to among other things establish a student refolding program for junior and senior high school students who have behavioral issues that mitigate their learning and employability. And sadly establish a pilot program in partnership with private sector to our young persons so that they can be afforded the opportunity to acquire vital basic job skills through practical or job training. Too many of our children take Exams such as DJC and BGCA at pro time. In some cases, they indicate they did take the exam, but their parents not award the exam a fee. Too many who do take exams never find out where they passed or failed, and the parents are checked either. This is an unacceptable state of affairs. A young person growing in our country 
must have an opportunity to get an education, to receive job skills, and to have some level of polyphony and community involvement if they are to lead a productive, craft-free life. With this in mind, the Ministry has designed a number of youth-based initiatives that are geared to dissuading youth from choosing a life craft. Last year, the Ministry of National Security launched the initiative of shock treatment. The program developed to help Bahamians are strayed down the wrong path to become more centered to the consequences of the deviant behavior. With the consent of their parents, children with some of the greatest disciplinary problems are exposed to life is like persons who choose to lead deviant lives. They spend time in police station and in prison, and they get a full hand knowledge of some of the hardships criminals face. Participants also experience rewards that begin from the abiding citizens and are provided with opportunities to build technical vocational skills. Understand this a positive male model in lives. Unfortunately, a significant number of males in prison have had no other figure in their lives. With in mind, Mystery launched a Give every child of the program at the Salem Church a week before the observant first day last year. Fifty men were selected to serve as mentors for at-risk young boys in the community. Several of the at-risk boys selected the program were able to spend their first Father's Day ever with the male mentors. The program is giving boys positive male role models, mentors, men who love consistency, who tell the truth, struggles as men, men who the boys for their gifts, correct them and make mistakes. They will also get them a transition to manhood and them know what they can accomplish. They can accomplish anything to which they pay months. Views for the program have been screened, black, trained, and attached, with the long-standing benefit of relationships be established. Recently, the enacting of Amendment to Child Protection Act, better known as Mark's Law, as well as amendments to Sexual Affairs Act, have passed by Parliament. This is the result to the issue of a nationwide alert system for missing children. Already have been two cases with notifications still been activated and children were successfully returned home to the audience. The sexual end of the register is completely prepared. My first name is Family structure is the base pillar of society. Approximately 7% of children born in the house, however, are born to single mothers. While it's true that some children come from two parent homes also engage in criminal activities, the most significant higher if they come from single parent households. This is an age old trend, and each era brings a dimension. Due to the illness of many single mothers, many of them try to be friends with their own rampants. Indeed, with them simply not know how to be Sneak parenting seems to be a lost art. Even where institutions have provided parenting classes, few women or men get advantage of the opportunity. Indeed, we have exhausted vast of attempts to get parents to accept responsibility for children. Unfortunately, these efforts have proven fail. So we feel we know alternative, but to respond to a commanding one of our confront that we the late responsibility of parents for their children. Hence, we have engaged the assistance of the of the Tangible to draft what is called the Parental Responsibility Bill, which will be tabled in Parliament to consult in civil society. The primary objective of the bill when is it? Be impel parents to properly supervise their minor children at all times and accept responsibility for their actions. If they do so, it will be a criminal offense. One year ago, the Ministry of National Security implemented the beginning of the transformation of what was formerly called a Massey's Fox Hill Prison from a prison institution to a correctional facility. A correctional bill passed by permanent order into effect. This was a long awaited project to place emphasis on reintegrating prisoners to society when the period of insurrection was complete. The intention of this new policy is not easy, but accepted is garnering increasing support. The Department of Correctional Services has recently been awarded a grant in the of $350,000 from the inter Condiment Bank to design a new parole program geared toward facilitating the successful reintegration of nonviolent offenders into society. The specific objective of this system is to reduce recidivism, that is, to stop persons of being to them from re-entering. It also gives recently released states an opportunity to return to society and live a productive, craft-free life. The government of the Bahamas has faithfully provided resources and engaged the service of men and women in our law and facilities to their manpower requirements. I'm going to take this opportunity to officially commend the hard King Law and Foreign Office, 
including those of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, Defence Force, the Department of Records, and partner agencies including the Department of Immigration and Customs, their service to our country. We will continue to our of the resources and accommodation the need to carry their duties. Recently, commissioned new police station in 8 Mile Grand Hama and new ground for a new station in Parage Grand Hama. I am also distinct that a new police station will be opened in Western province in the next The six communities of Infinity, Old Forty, Montezza, Leach, Clifton, Albany, Sandy, and the surrounding areas. In this regard, we will express gratitude for corporate partners for generosity providing some of the resources to acquire this new police station. I refer to the New Providence Development Company, the Life of Key Property Owners Association, the Life of Key Group, and Albany. Plan is also placed to expand the abilities available to the Drug Enforcement Unit and the Central Justice Unit and build a new state of forensic laboratory. My fellow Bahamans, residents of the Hamas, crime reduction is necessarily pursued with a renewed emphasis and vigor on dismantling criminal gangs, the removal of arms and munitions from streets, the removal of illicit drugs from our communities. Those engaging in criminal activity can expect face full weight of the law. Those who will threaten to save our nation as soon should know that we will not shirk from dealing with them. Most of us are full, law abiding, God bearing citizens who love our tree and our heritage and the freedom that our first fought to saw protect. We are not going to allow a small group of thugs who demonstrated that they are not interested in changing their ways to ruin our nation's future. I warn criminals, members of crime guests, that we will not rest till all of you are taken down and brought to us. I want members of the public to cease a sit from allowing their homes, the havens, criminals, and their sit activities. I remind our enforcement officers that constant law enforcement agencies is of paramount importance in our fight against crime. When the forces of law all are compromised by way of action. The state cannot limit, prevent, and push violation of the law or protect citizens' human rights. It is not enough to right wrong. You must embrace it, which is right, and reject it, which is wrong. Not only must you oppose monotony, complicity, corruption, and compromise, you are obliged to expose them. In our fight against them, you must tolerate zero tolerance for corruption. Did all the heads and residents of the numbers stick to the plate to support the many initiatives that are ongoing? Attend and support us. As a generation of children for themselves today at a crossroads, they are at that point in their lives when they are considering following the wrong path taken by the person in communities or losing path honesty, hard work, and charity. I call on the church and civic organizations and concerned citizens everywhere come more involved in the damn fright and help these boys and girls choose the path. You see them every day in our communities. They are for this. And they are in the church too. Perhaps some of you know close these youth are to make the wrong choice. We can change that. We need their fathers. We need the others to be part of their lives. In fact, we need both parents to be a part of that. We want parents to take their right place in the upbringing of their children. We want your support with the men ongoing crime fighting for us. We need each church to adopt at least one art rescue and see to that they fit high school. Teach the true views upon which country is built. We need mentors and tutors, counselors and youth workers. Our ability to store peace and honor lies in a party to come together and work as a team for their much work to be done and we need to just. Commence in September, we tend to conduct community walkabouts on a regular and other basis. I invite political leaders, community leaders, church leaders, activists, and all other interested citizens to join, join us in interacting with residents to demonstrate concern and to determine the extent to which we together can solve the challenges being experienced. On behalf of the government, I reaffirm our commitment to ensuring that no effort be spared in addressing the general elements in our society. We must all work together to ensure that the Bahamas becomes a safe, modern, prosperous, and strong Bahamas. I invite you to join me in holding the tent of the Bumble of the Constitution, in which I began to address. And I be the inheritors of and access to the Assembly of Islands, recognizing the supposed good do hereby proclaim in solemn praise the establishment of free and democratic nation founded on spiritual values. I am asking you 
to the powerful commitments in which our nation did get us in our lives and our views, and our respect for ourselves, for each other, and our love for our Bahamas. The pirates have been excelled long ago. Commerce has been restored. Let us therefore strive to live up to more the cause for us to move forward, upwards, and upward together. As we build a stronger, safer, more prosperous, and more balanced. I thank you for listening, and God bless you. I come of the Bahamas. That was the National Address on Crime by Honorable Dr. J. Nottage, MP and Minister of National Security.